In patients who have cirrhosis and portal vein thrombosis in whom we are planning to start anticoagulation, how do you approach variceal screening in such patients? Yeah, that's a great question. So variceal screening is important in patients with PVT because PVT can cause uh, exacerbation of portal hypertension and varices, which may be at risk of bleeding. Um, the real question is, how do you time endoscopy? So do you start your patient on anticoagulation and then do your upper endoscopy where you may need to band or do you um, band first and then start anticoagulation? I would start by asking yourself if this is a person who would benefit from a beta blocker for primary prophylaxis, because you may not need to do endoscopy at all if that's the case. If you do feel like your patient needs endoscopy because they're not tolerant of beta blocker or for another reason, then it's a little bit debated as far as when you should time this EGD. So um, there are small studies that suggest that the rate of bleeding in patients who are on anticoagulation that get banded is similar to that of patients that are off anticoagulation, but the current societal guidelines vary reflecting this uncertainty. So EASL, for instance, says that you should uh, defer starting an anticoagulation for PVT until after you've done endoscopy. ASLD says the data is uncertain, doesn't make a recommendation either way. And the Baveno-6 criteria suggests that it's okay to do an endoscopy on patients who are on vitamin K antagonists. Okay, Dr. Francis, what classes of medications are used to treat PVT? So uh, we have vitamin K antagonist or VKAs, low molecular weight heparin, and direct oral anticoagulants or DOAX. These are all reasonable options for patients who have cirrhosis and portal vein thrombosis. More data are available for VKAs and low molecular weight heparin compared with DOAX. However, the serial blood monitoring required of VKAs is cumbersome and unreliable in cirrhosis. Low molecular weight heparin is inconvenient as it requires a parental injection, but its shorter duration of action can be an advantage in patients awaiting transplantation or requiring frequent large volume paracentesis. Despite limited data, clinicians are increasingly using DOAX. Early data suggests promising efficacy, safety, and the higher recanalization rate as compared to vitamin K antagonist. DOAX can be used safely in patients with child A cirrhosis, with caution in child B cirrhosis, or creatinine clearance less than 30, but are not advised in child C cirrhosis. Thanks, that's helpful. And then when do you think about using TIPS or revascularization as a treatment for PVT? Great question. Portal vein revascularization with TIPS should be considered for patients who have additional indication for TIPS, such as refractory ascites, hydrothorax, or variceal bleeding. Revascularization is also indicated if it can facilitate the technical feasibility of transplantation. So, Transplantation candidates who fail anticoagulation and have complete portal vein thrombosis with or without mesenteric vein thrombosis may benefit from portal vein revascularization uh, and TIPS.